Okay, it's Monday, the 20th of May, not 9 o'clock in the evening, 9 o'clock in the morning, and I am not going outside in order to capture galaxy light or starlight. I am going out to capture this basic notion that we have been involved in solar panel related projects now for at least a year I think ever since that hurricane in Florida that occurred that was in October of two years ago and so as I've reviewed in previous videos we had installed these I believe there's 16 panels with a battery system an inverter a bunch of wiring boxes for routing switching and that all came out to about ten thousand dollars in investment only to discover that it could not be hooked into the local utility grid and therefore is only really useful and available for someone who lives off in the wilderness, in a cabin, and they want electrical power. So, setting that project behind us, we have moved on. And in this project, we contracted with a new friend, Brett Steigel, who then basically completely designed the system from scratch so that we could connect the panels not only to our home and this garage but to the utility box. Now this utility box cannot be used as is because it only counts watts in one direction. It has to be reprogrammed and that's something that the utility will do after this project is complete and We've had an electrical and, and material inspection to make sure that there is no risk of collapse of the roof, that all the conduit is properly set up, everything is wired successfully. And then finally, the local utility will come out and replace a panel inside this box. It's been reprogrammed so that it will count electron flow either off the grid or on to the grid. Meanwhile, we will supplement to about 30 uh, amps, a 220 to about 6,000 watts. We will supplement power to our home when the sun is shining on a day like today and the clouds are in abeyance, which will allow us to no longer heat our home with kerosene, as well as provide for all of our local summertime cooling with air conditioning, plus add lights. So it should basically cover when the sun is shining on a really good day. It should basically cover all of our electricity needs midday because we will have a group of panels facing to the east, which Brett is now installing on this wing. And unfortunately, a little more difficult for me to video a group of panels facing to the west at not too severe an angle. And of course, midday, both sets of panel as the sun sweeps across from, let's say, the 10 o'clock to the 2 o'clock position will generate plenty of electricity. So that is the plan. The question is, will God once again laugh as in our previous plan, which did not turn out because it was a cabinated solution to the problem of electrical generation through use of solar power. Well, folks, I am about to climb up on the roof for the very first time in owning this house for what? Some four years? Anyway, I gotta wait until the guy... Are you coming up or...? 
I'm coming up. Yeah, that's Brett. He's up there doing his bang up job and setting up solar panels on the roof. Meanwhile, you get to watch the ascent. You have a lot of wind on your audio. All right, a little sweep of the view from the top of the garage. This is the John Day Valley. We're in John Day. Downtown's only about three blocks away. You can see Canyon Mountain to the south and the east. We're now looking due south. And sweeping around to the west. The valley runs east-west for quite a few miles, about 50 miles, and that contributes to the fact that we are generally in a banana belt here, and it's actually a banana-shaped valley. This is the way a panel looks before he preps it to be installed on the roof. Okay, so because we're now laying the panels in a different direction, everything has to be reoriented like the wiring. So this shutoff valve, electronic, has to be mounted on every panel. And he has to get the harness together in such a way that when he runs it upstairs, against the wind, as we've been dealing with, he can lay the panel down and feel confident he's not going to have to redo everything while up on the roof. So that's what Brett's about here. Right now, I am standing on the ladder, looking towards the roof the east facing roof, catching some action up here because we need some light. We got the sun, I've got the camera, and Brett is taking care of the action. So it takes Brett about, let's say five, maybe no more than 10 minutes to prep each panel by getting the wiring configuration straightened out so it'll mate with its confreres here on the roof. And then there's a cinch that goes in to the mounting struts, I guess you would call them. And then the cinch both tightens up, as you see here, both panels, but initially you leave it loose so you can slide the next panel in place. Brett started on this side with the wiring. And he's gonna have to horseshoe it because he's not gonna, he's doing an elegant job of not having to make a long run. You see that orange wire over there? he'd have to have a longer run on it. So basically, even though he went, I think he went male, female, male, female, male, female there, he's gonna to have to run a wire under that far, far pattern, uh, panel so that he can run everything back to the orange wire. So there's just a little loop in the wiring that has to go on right about there. Also wanna point out the panels are standing about three and a half inches off the roof so that there's some airflow under them because they are less efficient when they heat up. So you want to try to keep the panels cool. Well, there it is. This is our contribution to the future. Uh huh, because I know that from experience it gets pretty hot in here. So not much of the heat, the heat is actually antithetical to the electrical production. Correct. But, so it's really just the photons from the sun that activate the, the uh, solar power uh, capture. Okay, uh, Brett's gonna explain the photo, series of photographs that I took up, we just took up on the roof because that's where the panels all go. He's just going to give us a little idea for the camera. It was too windy up there to be able to actually capture any kind of audio. So, so Brett, you want to sure. quickly recap what, what the installation was involved in on the roof? Yeah, Go ahead. A simple residential installation. What you're looking at is uh, a rail that's attached to a foot. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using a product that uses a butyl tape, direct attach, um, which you don't have to go up underneath the shingles. I think it's probably a superior product for this uh, this scenario. <laughs> and then uh, the rails go down, the panels go on the rails. And then there's a couple junction boxes I put up there. I have 
uh, 10 modules that are in a series, so a string of 10 on, on the east face, and a string of 10 on the west face of the roof. And There's two junction boxes. One string comes over to the other. And uh, in that junction box, I transition the wire from uh, basically an outdoor rated PV wire to uh, THWN, your typical you know, wire you pull through conduit, and then it comes down to the inverter here. So the question I have, none of the wire will be exposed whatsoever to sunlight. Uh, It'll be running along the yeah, panels themselves. Yeah, the only themselves. wire that's outside is a UV rated PV wire, okay. but it will be underneath the panels, correct? All right. There's no wires touching the roof because all of that one will be tucked in eventually. The orange wire won't touch the roof either. You definitely do not wind blowing the wiring around, scraping against the roofing material, especially when you're operating it, let's say, close to 500 volts DC, which is what will be routing through the wiring as it loops around. And then all the other wire goes through conduit up to, up to the inverter. And uh, one of the things we talked about a little more extensively was actually how you seal the supports for the panel rails to the roof and you said that a while ago you actually would have to do some kind of damage to the roofing oh, material yeah. to get the rail mounts on and now they have a new approach that allows you to just basically sure mount yeah what it i was directly. what i was saying is essentially that for 10 plus years it's always been you flash underneath a couple of courses of shingles and uh, there's been kind of a shift the last few years and now there's a lot of direct to the decking or direct to the, the surface. Mm -hmm. And Roofing I, I like this particular product, uses a butyl tape. So it's a peel and stick and it goes directly to. So if we look up at the, the struts on the roof up there, well, basically. We're still, we're still attaching to the structure. We're still going Yeah, into, it's going right to those two by fours. Into that, the truss, that correct. go right up to the peak of the roof and down. But this so, product can attach to the decking as well. To the, the plywood and correct. the deck. Yeah. All right, so in this case, because you were able to get solid connections to the two by fours up there, the wood screws you put through to hold the footings, the struts, uh, the footing to the panel rails actually go in to the two by four tops. They do. Up correct. against the plywood roof. Yeah, we're making progress. Look at those panels. We're already soaking up those electrons, that sunlight, creating electricity, but with no place to go. The last thing we're going to talk about until we're done with the project, unless something else comes up, is how the power feeds down here, it comes in, high voltage, probably about 480, 450 volts DC from the 20 panels up there. I'm hearing the tapping of a little tool over there. So what you wrapping up over there, Brett? Uh, caps. Sure. End caps. Add just a little cosmetic cleanup. You know. so, so what exactly is an end cap? look complete if it'll only work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you got all 20 panels now mounted on the roof of the garage. Is the wiring in place? The wiring harnesses? Uh, oh you know that the orange wires. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's red. You now have constant reddish orange whatever. Yeah, it's they, you now have continuity right? Yeah I checked it. Well. You already checked it down there? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have about eight and a half volts, so just like the other one, so we're, we're looking pretty good. Okay, so you're going to head out for lunch and... No, I'm going to do the end caps on the other side. Oh, end caps? I'm going to go... I'm going to get it fired up before I go. Really? Yeah, and hopefully it'll commission. I want to make sure. Alright. 
And there's two separate lines that feed into this. They're not yeah. summarized. They go two different string terminations. One, string two. And uh, the thing is, is that unlike a previous installation, Brett basically ran an interior conduit for the power, which is what those black boxes on the roof are meant to, Correct. to feed into this conduit. And And now we're gonna quickly explain a few things here. This is the actual inverter system, and it's known as an SMA inverter system. It costs yeah. maybe about a couple, 2,400 bucks to get one of these. Yeah. And it's got this, uh, basically, it could operate with a battery. Correct. If we had a battery, maybe in the future we'll put some batteries in. It also has a little uh, utility box here, so that for some reason, uh, we lose connection with the utility. We can plug, for instance, that refrigerator into this for a period of time, but I actually have to actuate this on-off switch to do so. And the switch does not actually switch the power that goes to these outlets. It actually goes and tells the circuit board that it's okay to route power to the outlets. And the logic in the circuit board is such that you have to be isolated from outside line voltage to actually be able to turn on this, as I remember from our previous discussion. I believe so. We'll, we'll run a test. We'll run uh, a test on that. They've been doing this. This is called their secure power supply, and they've been doing it for a long time on their previous inverter, the Sunny Boy. Um, yeah, basically it gives you a little power with if the grid goes down and you don't, with no battery, which is right. kind of unique to what they do. Because this is basically, this inverter is designed in order to work basically to feed power into the grid and it won't feed power into the house if the grid is offline. So the only access to power you might have in an emergency situation would be by this little Yeah, so box. in this particular setup, we have it set up as just a grid tied system with no battery. Uh, and it. so this is just a little bonus feature. Sure. Uh, when you have zero battery, you can still access some power if the sun is out. Got it. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a battery. This is a high voltage battery system. Um, so it does have ports for the battery. Now and I do have batteries as in a previous yeah, video yeah. from over here. It's a EG4 battery, battery and a EG4 inverter. And these are available to somebody if they want to purchase <laughs> it for what we call a cabinated solution, yeah. but they do not work with line feed into the utility power. Okay, so we're about to do a test we did yes the other day when before the weekend where the panels that are on the west facing bank the panels on the garage were delivering DC power but were shut dead, throttled back because there's no load through this conduit. And so there's a way of testing what I would call their idle potential. I already did that. I did a voltage check. You did a voltage yeah, check. Yeah, but now I'm going to go ahead and start the system. Oh, you're I actually going to... Yeah, I need to commission it, but I, I have to like go through an app and that's going to take me a few minutes. Okay, so you have to set up an app yeah. and then, so you, the previous test was just to make sure that all the panels were contributing to the DC potential coming off the roof and because they have a shutdown uh, monitor on them and there's no load, they were only delivering about, what, 0.5.6 volts DC, right? Yeah, about and so all 10 of them were delivering about 8 volts DC. However, we're going to go hot in a few moments, and that involves Brett being a, talking to the inverter system to be able to allow the inverter system to tell all the panels on the roof, dude, you can deliver electricity now. And that electricity is going to surge through, from the inverter, through this panel, I believe it's going to go out here and feed in through this rapid such shutdown switch into the meter and it's going to augment the power coming in and he gets to do this because it's part of his licensing that he gets to run an initial test once he's done with the complete installation and verification that the thing actually works. Okay, hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Well, we just turned on the circuit breaker. Some lights came up to show that it was initializing. These, these little LEDs flashed for a second, and now Brett's going to check the voltage. What are we getting? Yeah, 245. 
245. That's the AC right. voltage? AC voltage, yeah. Okay. Making sure everything's good. All right. And then, okay, that means we're now outputting 200, we're outputting 245 or no, no. volts? I have to go through a programming sequence with you, oh, okay. so it's going to take some time. Okay, well that was our first initialization of it, so it's going to take a little bit longer. Right, scanning a QR code that's on the side of the inverter, it's going to toss the load on. The unit is now booting up, you see some flashing lights indicating initialization. We've got a blue, a red, and I think that's green light there. And we're looking for them to, once it initializes, everything should turn off, I think. Well, everything turned off this time. Last time it didn't. So maybe we, uh, the first time we tried this, we weren't sure we had everything set up properly. It's not flashing anymore. That's a good sign. You got anything on your, no, he's using his cell phone here in order to talk to the inverter unit. Okay, uh, so Brett's phone now is talking by Bluetooth with the unit. We've got a flashing green and a red light because it's probably requiring, it needs configuration or what is called commissioning among those who are in the elite of solar panel installation and their experience. So Brett's now going through and thumbing with his cell phone here, uh, attempting to begin to talk with the inverter unit to configure it to its uh, nesting situation. It's going to probably ask a bunch of questions that Brett has to answer in some way. That would be my hypothesis. Until all of that is set up, we're not going to get any power, AC power out of this unit. We had some issues with uh, the interface dealing with uh, commissioning the inverter system. Well, that's, that's a glitch in their app. This is a brand new product, so. So we didn't really have a problem with our system. It was the yeah, actual interface it's, it's application. The app was on the good. phone, yeah. All right, so after resolving all of that, we stepped through a series of questions that had to be handled, one of which has to do with the device name and the type of device. Type of device had to be selected. Uh, kind of. Yeah. Okay. So after you went through and configured, st set, all, got all the way through it, you were able to throw this switch over here, which permits DC flow from the panels. Mm -hmm. And the, the fellow online basically said it takes about 10 minutes for it to activate all the panels to get them all to boot up, and in 10 minutes this thing should start providing power to the house and also to the utility. Yeah, if there's excess. But if there's excess, we get charged for it because the meter outside does not distinguish between power sourced. I don't back know that to be true 100 percent, but that's that's what I've been told. So you know, okay. basically, we just test it and then we turn it off. So we don't. Okay. We don't want to backfeed when we don't have Got the it. new meter. In. So we're waiting for 10 minutes now. I'm just going to review the status of the LEDs. I'm seeing uh, four LEDs right there. Uh, put, you put a cover over the AC connection. Yeah, you're going to see these uh, see these lights right here. These lights yeah, here all soon cycle around. Okay, and we're going to wait about 10 minutes. Yeah, and, and usually it's going to be a five minute boot up sequence. If right. you had everything off by code, or you know, it has and to. We're actually looking at. So yeah, now you're. It's 418 18 volts. 18 volts. It's almost. It's pretty much up there. Oh well, yeah, that's 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 operating voltage. Okay, here we go, folks. We are actually port. We are actually providing some power from the panels to the system, most of which, it depends on how much load we have in the house, will be going to the house, but otherwise it's being backfed temporarily because we have to shut that down after we run this test. 3,234 watts of an 8,000-watt 8, 8, potential. Uh, well, this inverter can output close to 6,000 watts. 6,000 so watts. The so we're halfway there. Yeah. Now. On the AC side, it's always less than that. So AC. it'll it'll throttle back the panels if it's getting to more than 6,000 watts. Very good. Uh, yeah, I just say it'll, it just caps. It won't go caps any higher. It. Okay, so there's a look at current power consumption. There are a series of panel lights that come up on the SMA inverter. Green light over here, which is nice. That means we're not generating power. It takes about three or four minutes for it to initialize. Blue over here means we're connected. So that means we can monitor the output of the power of this system over the internet. Okay. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to run a test of this utility box. And to do that, we're going to try it two ways. One with the power left on to this unit to see if we can simply just switch over while this is in operation and it'll reroute power to this box rather than putting it on line voltage. If that's the case, we'll leave it that way for the time being because, as I mentioned earlier, the power that we're generating can go to the house if we have enough load. But if we don't have enough load in the house, it'll go onto the line and the meter will actually keep track of our output, but it won't subtract it from our load, it'll add it to our load. So we don't really necessarily want to pay for more electricity, especially when we ourselves have sourced it. Okay, driveway is empty. Brett has left for the last time in terms of setting up the solar panel. Although there may be a few minor items left to be done. I love that. Slow down. I put a bit too much energy. The panels are on the roof. They could be generating electricity right now if I were to throw the circuit breaker. But we have to wait for an electrical inspection and then final hookups for uh, the utility. So the local utility has to inspect a few things. This is the way the panels look on the roof. This is the east face. We already managed to test out the panels. We were generating about almost 4K watts, even though we have mixed sky right now with uh, clouds. All the panels are in place. All the electrical circuits are all set up. All I have to do is throw a circuit breaker switch inside in the utility box and that awaits for when we have everything inspected tomorrow and the meter has been reconfigured to be able to detect current flow in two directions. Coming in from the utility or going to the house or to the utility from the panels on the roof. So that's pretty much a wrap. Project several months in the making since Brett got involved, a certified uh, solar panel installation expert, and almost probably eight, uh, 20 months since we originally set out to do a DIY installation on the part of a friend of ours by the name of Lee, which we later discovered could not be hooked up to the grid, but that system is available for someone else who may be interested. Leave a comment on this channel if you're interested in those panels and you live anywhere in Eastern Oregon where you're willing to drive out to pick them up and you will get them for about half the price of what we paid for all. So this is signing off. Hopefully my next video will either be music or it'll be Astro. We shall see.